Friends of Christ, grace to you in peace from God the Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. We had uh, our first Thursday evening worship service last, this past Thursday. We had an exuberant crowd. Eleven? <laughs> and my words today are pretty similar to the words that I gave Thursday night. So if any of you were here on Thursday night, go back to the kitchen, have a cup of coffee, have an ice cream sundae. You guys know where all the stuff is and things like that. So help yourself, all right? The rest of you, stay here. We did talk about worship at our Senate Assembly. God talks about worship. You catch that commandment number three? Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Luther put it this way in his explanation. We are to fear and love God so that we do not neglect God's word or the preaching of it, but regard it as holy and gladly hear and learn it. So my words to you today are going to be about worship. And I'm going to do them in a little bit different way. Have you had speech yet? In school? A speech class? You know where you have to get up and give all these different speeches? I'm guessing that you're not going to see that until ninth grade maybe. That's probably one of the most fearful classes that any junior high student can have. They have to actually get up and they have to prepare speeches and they have to talk about them. Now it's interesting because there are different kinds of speeches that you have to do. One of those speeches that you have to do is called a demonstration speech. So you're going to have to forgive me, I've got to do a little walking this morning first. I've got to get set up because I'm going to give you a demonstration speech this morning. <clears throat> when I was the demonstra demonstration speech that I gave when I was in ninth grade was how to shave using a straight edge razor. I, I, think, I think the guys tried to see if we could do something to really freak out all the gals. And the teacher as well. In fact, uh, one of my classmates showed and demonstrated on how to pluck and clean a morning dove in class. <laughs> and mine was going to be, I'm going to show you how to go with a straight-edge razor. So I had my grandfather's old straight-edge razor, and I showed, of course, how you, you use the strap and how you got it razor sharp, and I had that thing razor sharp, and it was ready to go. And then I, you know, got the old cup and that, and I've got everything on, and I'm just about to come up, and I'm, and I'm seeing the terror in my teacher's face. She's thinking he's going to cut his throat right here in front of class. And then I went like this and put down and brought up a table knife <laughs> and did it that way instead. It was just a little bit easier. So I'm going to give you this morning a demonstration speech about worship, okay? And I'm going to start with this. This is our life without worship. It's an empty glass. There's nothing in it. If that's all our life was, was an empty glass, it wouldn't be a very exciting life. However, however, here is our life with worship. And my faith, oh, you didn't even want to walk out here, did you? My faithful assistant, who's also my spouse. Now this is our life with worship. Doesn't that look good? Don't you wish you had one? It's like a bowl of ice cream. Now in this plastic dish, actually, there are two scoops of ice cream. And there's a reason why there's two scoops. 
Martin Luther once put it this way. He said, when the gospel has been preached and the sacraments have been administered, you have done worship. The gospel preached, the sacraments distributed. This is worship. Luther said it is like the schnitzel und kartoffels of worship. The meat and the potatoes. When you got the meat, when you got the potatoes, that's all you need. However, you kind of got to be careful. My wife and I were in Germany one time in old East Germany, and I went down to a restaurant at the, the Geisthaus or guest house that we were staying at, and there was not a person down there that spoke English. Nothing was in English. Everything was in German. And I'm looking at this menu in German, and I'm looking down, and I see this thing that's a, on Kotofels, and then in parentheses, Pomfrites, which is French fries. And I'm thinking, can't go wrong with French fries, right? So I ordered this, I pointed to the, to the waitress, um, she just nodded and smiled and, and repeated in German what I had just ordered, and then uh, um, a couple of folks at a couple of tables, when they heard it, they just oh, smiled, they thought this was great too. And so I'm going, oh, I'm, I'm probably going to get this incredible piece of meat with this, and it's just going to be marvelous. About five minutes later, they came back out, and everybody around me is smiling, and they put down this beautiful plate of french fries next to this plate that had a hunk of head cheese about like this. And of course, everybody's looking at me. You know, you got to eat it. And so I'm sitting there, I'm taking one french fry, and then I'm taking a little bite of, of this head cheese, and I take another french fry and another head cheese. I got about half of it done, and I'm sitting there, and I'm going, I don't feel well. And the, they came, the waitress came walking up, and I just went, oh, oh, full, 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 full. So smiling, she took it away. I went back upstairs, and Janelle will remember this. I got up there, and I was there for probably no more than 15 or 20 minutes, and I went into the bathroom, and I heaved my guts out for the next hour. you got to be careful. But to Luther, this was the most beautiful prime piece of meat. The gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And then there was this marvelous, beautiful potato on top that we call the sacraments of our Lord. Something that we're going to do in just a few minutes. Now this is great, and Luther says this is all we need. But you know what? There are things that can make it so much better. For example, there is liturgy. There are these things that we say each and every Sunday, but they are things that are so important. The Lord's Prayer. The prayer that Luther said is the only prayer I pray. The Apostles' Creed. One that said did not come, as Luther put it, from any of us or from our forefathers. It came from all of the prophets, from all of the apostles, from the entire Holy Scriptures. Came and given for children and for plain Christians. They are those words that can be so important, and I'll never forget in my first call, up in northern Minnesota at a nursing home I was at, and I had been visiting this lady who just usually had absolutely no response at all to anything that I said. And one day I had forgotten uh, my green hymnal because I used to, to read a few things out of there. And because I didn't have it with me, I thought, well, okay, I'll start this. And I started a confession with her with the following words and some of you who have been to church for decades and decades will know these words beloved in the Lord 
Let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins to God our Father, beseeching and imploring Him. It's from our old red hymnal. And as soon as I started saying those words, suddenly her eyes just lit up. She remembered them. They were something that she had heard and had spoken from childhood on. It enhances worship. It's kind of like the chocolate syrup on top of that ice cream. Ooh. Now doesn't that look good? There are other things as well. Music. Music. And, and I had to write down a couple of things about music from, from Luther because I didn't want to mess it up. Um, Luther wrote so much about music. As you know, um, Luther loved music. Um, Luther wrote many hymns. In fact, uh, probably the, uh, the greatest hymn in, in our Christian church, A Mighty Fortress is Our God, was one of Luther's hymns. Here's what Luther said about music. I am not satisfied with him who despises music, as all other fanatics do. For music is an endowment and a gift from God, not a gift of men. It also drives away the devil and makes people cheerful. One forgets anger, pride, and all other vices. I place music next to theology and give it the highest of praise. And then this one of, of, of all the quotes Luther ever had about music. As soon as I read this one, I'm going, boy, things haven't changed in all these years. Listen to this. This was actually written in an, in, in an intro to a hymn book by Johann Walther that Luther wrote. And here's what he wrote. I greatly desire that youth, which after all, should and must be trained in music and other proper arts, might have something whereby it might be weaned from the love ballads and the sex songs. And instead of these, actually learn something. I had no idea that there were those issues back in Luther's day, but apparently there were. Music. The beautiful hymns of God, those beautiful, beautiful Christmas songs, those songs of absolute joy. They are like, to me at least, like the caramel sauce. Oh. Now it's looking good, isn't it? But there are other things that we can do to enhance our worship. I call them the sprinkles of worship. Things like the Sunday School Christmas program, and I am so glad that churches have made a decision to, uh, to take that and put it smack dab in the middle of worship because there is no worship service that can compare to the children standing up to those little three and four year olds standing up and singing happy birthday to Jesus. To those wonderful little kids, to Mary and Joseph. Joseph always wearing somebody's old robe that was donated. And Mary having her great line, our daughter one time at Eastside Lutheran in Sioux Falls was chosen to be Mary. And if you know, you know from Sunday school, that was a big deal to be chosen Mary. And so, of course, Mary had some lines. You know, Joseph is a great person to have, too, but Joseph never gets a line. He's, he's a quiet guy. But we both told our daughter that because Eastside Lutheran has a huge sanctuary um, and they didn't have microphones, that she just had to shout it out as loud as she could so that everybody could hear, even the people in the back. And so it comes time for her line and all of a sudden, bellowing out as loud as I've ever heard her yell before, she says, how can this be, for I am a virgin? <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> they heard it. Believe me, they heard it. All of those other things that I call the sprinkles of worship. Now, if you're wondering what these sprinkles are, this is a combination of cinnamon and sugar. When I was a kid, 
we didn't have a lot of chocolate in our house, but I always wanted something sweet on my ice cream. And so my mom mixed up this concoction of half sugar and half cinnamon. And since the time I was a kid, that's, if I really wanted something special, that's what I'd put on my ice cream. And in fact, I was going to think that I was going to have to try and make some of this stuff. And I went into a grocery store, and by golly, if they don't sell it that way, called cinnamon sugar. Not only is our cup getting full, it's looking really tasty too, isn't it? That's what worship is. It's so sweet. It's so tasty. It's something that you really, after you taste it, can't do without. It is an important piece of your life. Martyred pastor Dietrich Bonhoeffer talked about the fact that there is something so special that happens when Christians gather together. It is something that cannot be duplicated anywhere else. It only happens when Christians come together. It is truly the topping on an incredible Sunday. And in fact, the only way to top off an incredible Sunday is with whipped cream, right? Ooh. We now have something that's beautiful, tasty, delicious. Mm. May God be with you each and every day as you worship together. Amen. And I'm going to take this out or I'll eat the rest of it. I know I will.